the Yellowstone volcano might erupt any time. The world's deadliest volcano. Is Yellowstone about to blow? Whenever it does, would it kill all people, animals, and other organisms out there? I guess you truly imagine an epic catastrophic event just like a film. But what do the scientists claim? Want to know more? Then watch the video till the end. If the volcano erupted under Yellowstone National Park had more big eruption, this could send ash a long way throughout the US, devastating structures, killing farms, and closing down power stations. It would be a big mess. A super eruption would be terrible, but it's not likely to happen. But we shouldn't all worry about it. The chances that this will occur are, luckily, not very high. The Yellowstone supervolcano is a lot stronger than a typical volcano. Yet, it has only erupted three times that were really big. One happened about 2.1 million years ago, another 1.3 million years ago, and the third about 664,000 years ago. And even after what you might hear in the news, there are no signs that there will be a second super eruption soon. Even though the Yellowstone supervolcano will always be a cause of horrific fascination, it's easy to understand why. In September 2014, a group of researchers wrote a geochemistry, geophysics, and geosystems paper about what a Yellowstone super eruption would look like. They discovered, among many other factors, that the volcano would cover the Midwest and states like Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Colorado with three feet of dangerous volcanic debris made of broken stones and glass. Far too much ash might brutally murder animals and plants, crush roofs, and short out all kinds of electrical devices. Ash, ash, and more ash. One of the paper's authors, Jacob Lowenstern of the U.S. Geological Survey, emphasized that the article wasn't a forecast for the future. Even if Yellowstone did erupt again, you probably wouldn't get the worst-case scenario, he says. What's much, much more common are small eruptions. That's a point that often gets ignored in the press. And even those small eruptions are very rare. Under Yellowstone National Park is a five-mile deep pool of hot magma nourished by a vast dust cloud of molten rock that rises from hundreds of miles below. This warmth causes several of the park's well-known geysers and hot springs. As the magma reaches the surface and cools in the compartment, the surface above fluctuates in elevation. This magma chamber has only bubbled up a few times in the past. Most of Yellowstone's eruptions have already been slight lava streams. The most recent one happened at Pitchstone Plateau about 70,000 years ago. However, the possible explanation of Yellowstone receives so much consideration is because there is a small chance of a super eruption, which could be very dangerous. A super eruption is any outburst with a volcano, explosivity index value of 8 or higher, and throwing out at least 1,000 cubic kilometers of material. That is sufficient to dump Texas 5 feet underground. These super eruptions are a thousand times stronger than any of the largest eruptions we're used to. Yellowstone already had three massive eruptions in the past, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 664,000 years ago. The final one at Yellowstone Lava Creek threw up so much stuff from underneath that this left a 34 mile by 50 mile distress in the ground, which we now call the Yellowstone Caldera. Yellowstone's Big Explosions of the Past Geoscientists have discovered proof of at least 47 super eruptions in the planet's history, so Yellowstone isn't the sole supervolcano there. The last one was in Lake Taupo in New Zealand, about 26,000 years ago. More extensively, when tectonic plates moved 74,000 years ago, they induced the huge Toba eruption. This resulted in a massive, 6 to 10 year worldwide cold season. There has been one super eruption every 100,000 years, but this is not a hard and fast rule. So, what would it look like if Yellowstone erupted? Let's repeat it. There is a very slight chance that Yellowstone will spring up in any way. Yellowstone will probably have relatively small eruption, with lava flows like what's occurring at Barabunga in Iceland, or a normal volcanic eruption. 
as the magma made its journey to the surface, there would probably be a lot of earthquakes in a certain part of the park. Still, if something much larger super eruption happened, which is unusual, the danger signs would be significantly greater. We'd likely first see intense seismic activity across the entire park, says Lowenstern. Before a volcano erupts, this could take several weeks or months for the earthquakes to split the rock just above the magma. But what if a super eruption was 1,000 times stronger than a normal volcanic explosion, threw out at least 240 cubic miles of substance, and could last for several weeks or months? The lava flows will stay within a reasonably small area inside the park, maybe 40 miles. Only around one-third of the substance might make it through the air. Volcanic ash, a mix of broken stone and glass, might destroy the most when it was thrown miles into the atmosphere and spread across the United States. In their new paper, Lowenstern and his colleagues analyzed old ash reserves and more complex computer models to conclude that an explosion would make an umbrella-shaped cloud that would spread out in all directions. It's possible that a super eruption could dump three feet of ash on the northern Rockies, destroying large parts of Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. In the country's middle, a few inches of ash would fall, while the coastlines would get even less. The actual dispersion would depend on the season of the year and the climate. Any of these things happening would be unfortunate news. This much ash from a volcano could murder civilians, crops, animal life, and shatter structures. Perhaps a few inches of ash, which the majority of the nation could get, can ruin farmlands, jam roads, make breathing difficulties worse, restrict sewage pipes, and perhaps even end up causing transformers to short out. Most of North America would be required to stop having flights. A volcano would also temporarily cool the Earth. An enormous eruption like that could also have a significant impact on the environment all over the world. Volcanoes can send out sulfur aerosols that cool the atmosphere by reflecting the sun's rays into the air. Since these particles don't stay in the air for long, the impact is only transitory, but can be extremely strong. Pinatubo blew up in 1991 and cooled the Earth by about 1 degree Celsius for several years. The 1850 eruption of Mount Tambura cooled the globe enough just to hurt crops all over the planet, and many have caused mass starvation in some places. And those volcanic activities were pretty small compared to what a supervolcano is thought to be able to do. Ooh, so what are the chances that Yellowstone will blow the top? Presently, there are no signs that an explosion is about to happen. The USGC says so. Odds are very high that Yellowstone will be eruption-free for the coming centuries. The Earth will see super eruptions in the future, but will they come in Yellowstone? That's not a sure thing, says Lowenstern. Yellowstone's already lived a good long life. It may not even see a fourth eruption. Volcanoes, even so, do end up dying out. The magma compartment below Yellowstone has been influenced by two powers at odds the heat from beneath, and the cold air from above. Since less heat pops up underneath, the compartment might freeze and transform into a solid granite block. Furthermore, the volcanic hub under Yellowstone is moving steadily to the northeast. If you wait long, the hub will shift away from Yellowstone, and the Yellowstone supervolcano will probably stop erupting. Indeed, another supervolcano may form farther to the northeast, but the hot spots need to warm and melt the chilly crust. And that process may take at least a million years. It's hard to get our minds around something like a million years, Lauren Stern said. Humans are a relatively brand new species, but Earth's been around a very long time. These systems take a long time to do what they do. So that was it for today's video, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. If you do, make sure to like and leave a comment. Let us know in the comments below what kind of content you want to see in the future videos. Till the next video, take care everybody.